Hello, colleagues. Welcome to the new interview on Rosmo channel. Uh, today, our guest is Marco Schnell, uh, Manager Editor Design and Manufacturing Samples and Mechanical Solutions at Continental Engineering Services. Hello, Marcos. Hello. Oh, Marcos, thank you for coming. And my first question is, uh, what is Continental uh, Engineering Services? And, uh, yeah, your question is good. I actually have a um, little presentation for you and I can share my screen, okay? And then you can see what Continental is and uh, what our area is, okay? So Continental, I think everybody knows uh, about the tires, that's for sure. Everybody have heard about tires from Continental, but Continental is much more than just tires. Um, we have the automotive technology here. We also have the um, rubber technology here, uh, included tires, and also the Conti tech area. And our um, fifth area is the powertrain technologies. It's just called Vitesco. You have heard about that. We actually have a, a spin-off at the moment. And Continental Engineering Services, shortly CAS named, um, it is uh, located here, but we are a cross-divisional competence center working for the whole uh, Continental and working um, also internally and externally. And um, Continental Engineering Services, actually we, we came from the prototype side but uh, we find out uh, there is a needed in the market to build up some small series because Continental is that huge, we are not able to produce small series. So that is the reason why we start with our small series production to fill the gap between prototypes and big series. And yeah, that's my question, my, my answer for your question, please. Thank you so much. And uh, could you please tell about the competence center for additive design and the manufacturing, Adam, uh, why it was created? Yeah, um, you see here, um, after the, the small series manufacturing and prototype production, we built up our competence center for additive design and manufacturing. And we will have a look on the top of it. There you see. Um, we built up a, a special area just for GD printing. It is around about 600 square meter. We separated in um, two areas, in the metal area here in red, and also in the plastic area in green here. Um, it is fully uh, climated. Um, it is needed for the high technology machines, what we use here. And why do we uh, start with the competence center of additive design and manufacturing? The idea of this competence center was a group-wide competence center, including all the technologies which are available at the market. So means plastic printing, metal printing included in this whole competence center and also included the, the technology and the know-how and also technology consulting, all the researchers with university, topology optimization, construction, reverse engineering means um, everything around additive design and manufacturing. Hey, thank you so much. And uh, uh, how additive technologies are applied at Continental Engineering Services? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's just uh, for the question from the last question. We also start right now with uh, classic cars and classic paths and also modification some classic parts just on the side. Yeah, how do we uh, implement uh, the additive design and manufacturing in, in our company? There you see, this is our product life cycle. You see here, this is our product life cycle and I will finish it just a second. And in every area, where you see from the product life cycle of a product, what we produce at Continental, we use right now to deep printing. There you see in the concept refinement, we start with demonstration models. What does it mean? Very quick models when we have a customer who needs a, a very quick part in, in just two or three days, we are able to print it very quick and send it to the customer. 
give it, give them an, an idea how does uh, the product looks like. And uh, in the development and also in the industrialization and in the validation time, we are able to print all the ABC samples. ABC samples is uh, from the A, from the worst uh, beginning, B is uh, with good materials and C is uh, serious material. Um, in the serious production and also in the ramp up area, we built up tools and devices. What this means, we uh, built up tools for our serious production. We also make some uh, devices for handling parts and handling the serious production at all. For example, uh, some gripper uh, for robots and something like that. And after the, the serious production, when we stop the serious production, we start with spare parts because we have an aftermarket. We have a spare part. Uh, what we need to produce 3D printing, you can imagine, is very useful for that. And this is very new in the serious production. Right now, this year, we start with our first 3D printed serious production. So what does it mean? It means we have the first printed part, which is uh, produced in series and is also used in the end product. So it means it uh, is really used in, in, the, in a car for, uh, for driving around and also um, have all the certifications you see here. You know, Germany have a lot of certifications. They know uh, how to do it very difficult. And yeah, but we... How, but how do you manage it? The certification because it's a very common question in Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a good question, and I can tell you, it was not easy. It was very hard to make make it able to to get all the certifications for three D to, to, uh, printing, and um, think about it, the three D printing process um, in serious production. Everything needs to be. Um, reproducible. Everything needs to do again, again, in the same way. But when you print, normally it is not do again, again, in the same way. The printing not the printing is no problem. The printing on its own, that's OK. That's not, not that uh, hard. But uh, before the printing and after the printing, the post and the pre-processing, um, that's hard to, to make the, the um, the letter structure all the same to make the, um, the construction all the same and always uh, do the same way uh, from the removing from the from the structure the support structure remove them always the same and also to guarantee that you have at all time the same quality in your process um, we need around about one and a half year uh, a long way, and we I get some uh, gray hairs about <laughs> in this time, but uh, we did it, <laughs> and we were successful. Uh, okay, did you finish <laughs> your question? Yes, you, we, yeah, we finished, but... and we start in in the beginning of June, so it means one month. We will start with the serious production. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, what 3D printers do you use for additive manufacturing and what materials do you use and why? Mm -hmm. um, I, I already um, give you a little uh, idea. We, we start a competence center with uh, plenty of technologies and it was our plan to have a lot of technologies because it makes it flexible. It makes us flexible. Um, this, this one is uh, one of the oldest technologies. And I will show you just a little bit about the process. Mm -hmm. um, named stereolithography, shortly SLA. And it is uh, the oldest 3D printing technology. It's around about 30 years old. Um, the printing process is nearly all the same. You have uh, layers building up out of uh, in this case, a uh, resin. It is in uh, photopolymer. And then you, you light layer on layer. And there you see 
you always make a coating of a layer and then you make uh, the expose. And after that, you build up your parts layer by layer. And you see uh, my printing here, my printer here builds up this perfect apple now. For sure, it's just idealized, but uh, it gives you an idea how does it work. Um, in this technology, we use a, a system from 3D system. Uh, the build size is uh, good. The special thing with this technology is this very high resolution uh, and we use uh, photopolymers for this technology. There we have different kinds of photopolymers. Um, for example, very strong heat resistant and uh, all, all of this. And we use this technology ex actually very often for green parts, but for sample parts and quick parts and high resolution parts. Okay, and yes. this is the technology that's close to that. I think uh, I can jump over it. It is very close to the SLA te technology, but it is um, similar to the technology. Um, I think FDM, fuse deposition modeling, is the most used technology or the most known technology in the world, I think. Um, we, use, we use here a, a Stratas system. We have a huge print size and we have uh, all the thermoplastics here, for example, ABS, Ultem, and so on. And this is an industry machine. But we also use uh, here some uh, desktop printer. It is, uh, we use uh, here Ultimakers to print out uh, quick and cheap parts. So the plan is to give everybody, everybody um, apprenticeship, uh, give uh, the developer and give everybody the, sh the, the chance to print out samples and parts on his own to get an idea and to get a to make a quick development of his product. Um, there's another plastic technology. What we're using this is selective laser sintering. It is a powder bag technology. There you see um, how does it work. We have a a supply cylinder here and a build cylinder here, and it is similar to the process what I have shown you before. We make a coating. This is not a resin, it is a powder you see. After that, we make the expose and the process can repeat. This is uh, the machine what we use for. Um, the good thing with this technology is um, you don't need support structure. This means you can use the whole build size of the machine. That means when you have small parts like, like this, you can uh, print around about three or 400 pieces at once in one day. Make it very quick and very useful. We are using here um, all the polyamides and also polypropylene. Yeah, I tell you the, the feature is no support structure. And uh, the last technology, um, printing technology, is the metal technology, shortly SLM, selective laser melting. It is similar to the, to the SLS technology. We also have a powder bed technology. You see, it is nearly the same, just the coater is a little bit changed. And um, the machines what we use is from Trumpf, Truppen 3000. Um, the good thing is here, we can work here with uh, all weldable materials, um, not plastic, but uh, non-ferrous and metals. I mean, aluminum, titan, steel, everything. And uh, now we start uh, with, we have a lot of other materials you see here. We also develop on uh, our, uh, our own material for this machine to um, get more flexible parts for this technology. Okay, this is uh, about the 3D printing technology.
Thank you so much. And uh, could you please tell about the parts with complex shapes and bionic structures? So how do you realize them and why do you choose bionic structure? Yeah, um, I think 3D printing um, gives us the freedom to construct the way we never have before. We have the, the possibility to uh, produce parts without uh, milling and uh, use common technologies. And um, in this case, it is very useful to uh, reduce material. And then when you use a topology optimization, we are able to uh, save weight, means mass on a car. Um, for example, a brake caliper. Um, we use it to save material. We use it to uh, reduce the mass, the, um, the mass on the, on the body of the car. And we use it to make parts stronger and easier. And uh, there's a, another important point. I think we are able to make parts and uh, products intelligent. For example, we have uh, parts included with a pipe inline with a cooling pipe in line. And that wasn't able before. So now we are able to print parts with uh, two, three, or five or more included um, functionalities. So it means our parts are now very smart. That's the main reason for topology optimization in Continental. Thank you so much. And uh, could you please tell about 3D scanning in Adam? Uh, is it contact or non-contact? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, it is uh, is always uh, named in the same uh, way. 3D printing and 3D scan is very close together um, or named uh, reverse engineering. Why do we need it? Um, we need it when we have parts uh, where we don't have a 3D sketch, 3D model, we just have an original part and now it is needed to make a 3D model. Yeah, and if, therefore we use a 3D scan. Um, we use a different 3D scanner from uh, GOM, very high industry systems. You see here uh, an Artec Space Spider. This one is uh, used in our area. It is an hand scanner, but uh, it also has a good resolution. And what we use with this, what we do with this uh, 3D scanner, we are able to move to the machines or to, to the car to move and sit in the car and scan areas what we need. Good resolution, very useful. And we also make with this, with this, uh, with this 3D scanning system, we make uh, measurements to find out how is the product, did we, do it right, have we good uh, results from the measurement? Okay, thank you so much. And uh, in your opinion, what is the best 3D printing method? I think, I know I know all about the technologies what we use, not all about which are known, <laughs> but uh, from the technologies, what we use at uh, Continental, the best result we definitely get out of the metal printing. This one has the best results and the most reproducibility, reproducible quality. Um, for very quick parts, I think the FTM te technology is very useful. And for, for some special plastic parts, we have SLS technology. But I think at the end of the day, I think we will decide for metal printing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And uh, could you please give some examples uh, of uh, additive manufacturing in Continental? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I, I have a, another technology what is interesting for you too. Okay. Um, think about the uh, metal printing. Um, yeah, we have a, a build size. Uh, it is round 300 millimeter and 400 millimeter high. And mm -hmm. what do we do when we have bigger parts? When we have bigger parts, we, we, we're not able to print that in one piece. So what we do, we cut them through with a CAD program, we cut them. And after that, we need to weld them together. And for that, we, put, we event, we um, 
invent an own laser welding system you see here. It is a combination of a, a true Trump true, true, true disc laser system and also an mm -hmm. industry robot. And there you see a little video. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit proud about this technology because <laughs> we do it on our own. And now we are able to weld 3D shaped parts together. And uh, in the head of the laser welding system, we have a camera system which recognize on his own the welding line and make a, um, a little uh, uh, find out a way and uh, make a steering of the robot. I have a good practical example for you, maybe later. Uh, there you see how we use this technology. Okay, practical okay. examples, right? Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, practical examples, we have plenty of them, but I will <laughs> give you a little uh, overview of some uh, interesting, and I think, yeah, we are from the automotive area, building up parts for cars and yeah, for sure, the examples from cars. There we have a, a brake fluid reservoir. It is uh, printed out of the SLS technology in PP. And the good thing is we have the possibility to print it without an injection mold. Mm -hmm. And normally injection molds, we need months, months and 1,000 of euros to get the first prototype. With 3D printing, now we get it in days and save a lot of money. Another practical example is an air suspension. It is from an air spring system. You see here, um, spring system from a car, I think everybody know. We also have in, in how higher classes of cars, we have air spring system because we have a good behavior from the car and we are able to print the air spring not to spring at all, but parts of them. It is printed out of PA6 and very strong material. It is uh, similar to PA6 uh, GF35. It is a fully functional sample. And again, without an injection mold. Another plastic example is uh, this one. This is a cardanic suspension. The special sh thing with this part is it is printed in one part. This is a sensor, one of our products from Continental, but the, the white plastic, what you see around, it is printed in one part and we are able to move this cardanic suspension to move here and here along two axes, this axis and this axis. Then we can turn around the sensor, is a short radar sensor. We can turn them around to access without any tolerances. Yeah, and, and I think that's a very nice uh, example. This car, you might have seen it in, in a museum. It, it is very uh, rare. And um, this one is a Bizzarini. And what we print here, or at first, we got this old brake caliper from this car. It's very old and it's not anymore allowed to use. What we do, we make a reverse engineering. We used it to de scanning technology. And after that, we print it out, make a machining with this part. And now it's already in the car and it's useful. And it's very special. It is printed out of um, aluminum. we were able to produce this part without any drawing, without any CAD model. It was just by 3D scanning and it's crazy, but the new material is 30% higher, have a higher strength uh, than the original one. 
So you got a new part. It is stronger than the old one, and uh, yeah, you you might get a better drive performance with this product. Um, another example is a crankcase from a 911 R2. This um, you see here. In this case, we just make uh, the reverse engineering, but it was uh, difficult. And we don't print it so far, but we are able to print it, but uh, there was no need anymore. But we show it is possible to do. So it means with 3D printing, we are able to print, yeah, nearly a whole motor for a race car. Um, this example is a little bit uh, longer, but it is uh, interesting because uh, it is a little bit too long for our 3D printers. So we, we were not able to print it in one piece. So what have we done? We make a cutting line here. We cut it in two pieces. We uh, make a construction of uh, some breakaway flanks around this cutting area. After that, we print them out. There you see the upper and the lower part. And there you see the breakaway flanks. After that, we make a, um, a wire eroding from the welding surfaces. And all the tooling is printed too. And this is the part not finished now, but it is uh, screwed together. So we screw uh, the pipe halves together and then we make a little welding point here and here, and then we break these flanks away. After that, we start, you already have seen, our laser welding process again. And this is the finished part. Yeah, and it was actually a small series. We built up uh, 50 pieces of them. And we found out everything was good. The tolerances was good. And also uh, the strength of the material was very good. The last example is a brake caliper. Uh, we print them out uh, 20 or 25 times for different cars. And we make a whole validation. What does it mean? We drive around in test areas. We make a, a whole testing uh, testing area. We make tests with this car with this brake caliper. And yeah, in fact, we save a lot of time. Normally, we need 14 weeks, and, and we shorten it to one week. And we got it street legal. So it means in this car. We have a printed brake caliper driving around Frankfurt. Yeah, that's um, a little overview of our practical examples. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, what are your plans for further additive manufacturing development? Um, I think the, my, my mainly plan is um, to bring the 3D printing technology more into the serious production, make, the, make it possible, make the industrialization possible, develop the, the technology, also develop the, the quality of the material, especially develop uh, plastic printing. With metal printing, we already have reached that. With uh, plastic printing, we need to improve the process, we need to improve the quality, but I think we are on a good way. And yeah, the main thing, the main topic from my side is go into the serious production and show 3D printing is able to print serious parts. Thank you. And uh, could you please tell about your personal experience? How did you start use uh, additive technologies? And uh, in your personal opinion, could you 
these technologies replace traditional manufacturing in the future? Um, yeah, in the past, I, actually, in fact, I, I comes from the robot size. I was an, a developer for robot systems, but uh, in my uh, in in my in my own in my private area, I already have some 3D printers for printing some small plastic parts, and it was fun. It was fun for me to printing parts to realize them on my own. And then I heard about uh, the continental. I heard about continental is starting up this uh, competence center, and yeah, uh, I tried to go there. I did it, and now I'm there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think uh, the German uh, word uh, translated is um, "hard blood." So I make it with my heart. It is uh, not just not just a job for me. It is also and hobby from my side. What about uh, your opinion uh, about uh, the traditional manufacturing uh, versus uh, additive manufacturing? So uh, could these technologies replace uh, traditional manufacturing in the future? How do you think? I think it uh, don't replace traditional technologies. Mm -hmm. It will um, make them better because <laughs> because we are able to make parts quicker. We're able to produce parts in another way. But I think printing, printing technologies at the moment are not competitive to common technologies like welding machines, like, like um, bending machines, because they are a lot quicker. Injection molding is a lot quicker and cheaper. But in combination, we can grow up the whole technology, not just printing, everything. Okay, Marco, thank you so much for your time. And uh, our uh, viewers, thank you for watching and see you at Roswald. <laughs>